The European Central Bank offers its latest monetary policy announcement on Thursday the 22nd of April, and economists will be looking to whether President Christine Lagarde makes any adjustments to interest rates or quantitative easing, QE. Now, neither is expected, but just in case, the main refinancing rate stands at zero, as it has since September 2019, and the Pandemic Emergency Purchase Programme, or PEP, has a current limit of 1.85 trillion euros from its inception date in March 2020 out to March 2022. Now, this latest version of the QE programme has been expanded in scope twice already from its initial level of 750 billion euros. That means the ECB's balance sheet now carries assets with a value of 7.5 trillion, up more than 40% year to date. Now, make of that what you will, but it looks like there's little turning back from here. On the home front, the big pitch will be dominated by the latest unemployment numbers on Tuesday the 20th of April. The last published unemployment rate was 5%, as 1.7 million people were unfortunately out of work, though that was at least a little bit lower than in December, even if still some 339,000 people have been unlucky enough to lose their job since the start of the pandemic. Again, it could have been worse. The furlough scheme has helped to keep the unemployment rate down. There were still nearly 5 million people on that at the end of January, according to March's budget statement from Chancellor Rishi Shunag. Now, it'll be no comfort at all to those who have lost their job, but the UK's average jobless rate since 1971 has been 6.8%, so we're still well below that, which is something. Moreover, the Office for Budget Responsibility now thinks the jobless rate could peak at around 6.5% later this year, down from its prior estimate of 75 So let's hope that offers a little bit of hope for the future. However, the claimant count is still high. This stands at 2.7 million people and measures not just those who are out of work, but those who are having to claim other unemployment-related benefits such as universal credit and not just job seekers' allowance. Times are therefore still tough for a lot of people and hence the concept of the K-shaped recovery, where some are doing very nicely, thank you very much, and they'll be able to go out and spend this month, well, that's not the case for a significant number of consumers. On the corporate front, the first quarter reporting season in the USA is about to hit top gear. After the big banks last week, it'll be Netflix and Intel, as well as United Airlines and Southwest Airlines that might help set the tone in the coming week. Here in the UK, around a dozen FTSE 100 firms are due to update their shareholders on how the year is going, although most will do so via a trading statement rather than a first half or full year results. A number of mid and small caps are also scheduled to do the same, and names which could be worthy of note include the following, though do please remember that these dates are potentially subject to change. Rio Tinto and BHP kick off a very busy week for the miners on Tuesday the 20th. Then there's Bunzel, Anto Fagasta and Huxchild mining on Wednesday the 21st. Relics, Teloimpi, Rentakil and Spectris as well as three more miners in the form of Anglo-American Polymetal and Centamin on Thursday the 22nd. But for me, the company capable of causing the biggest fuss in the week ahead is Associated British Foods. The owner of Primark, British Sugar and Twinings Tea, is scheduled to report its first half results for the year to September 2021 on Tuesday the 20th of April. Shares in the conglomerate are up by around a quarter over the past year. That's pretty good going given the extremely testing backdrop, and it's also better than the FTSE 100, which is advanced by around a fifth over the same time period. Now, AB Food's solid balance sheet, 1.6 billion in net cash at the full year stage last August, excluding lease liabilities, but 2.1 billion of debt, including them. It's diversified business and hopes that Primark will benefit from a reopening of shops, all potential reasons as to why the shares have outperformed. Such has been the pace of change in the COVID situation, with lockdowns and easings coming and going in the UK, Ireland, Europe and beyond, that AB Foods has felt obliged to issue no fewer than four trading updates since November's full year results. The net result is that the FTSE 100 stalwart has forecast a drop in sales, operating profit and adjusted earnings per share for the fiscal first half. Just for your reference, the numbers attained in the first half a year ago were as follows. Sales of £7.6 billion, adjusted operating profit of £682 million, and adjusted earnings per share of 61.8p. Now, for the full year to September, analysts are forecasting a small increase in sales, broadly flat operating profit at just above a billion pounds, and an improvement in adjusted earnings per share from last year's 81.1p, thanks to lockdown slowly coming to an end, we hope. 
Analysts will therefore focus as much as anything on comments for the second half and the full year as they will for the numbers for the October to March period. Analysts and investors will look to the divisional mix of earnings as well. Primark was the biggest earner in the first half of last year but then fell into loss in the second, while the other divisions, grocery, sugar, agriculture and ingredients, all showed improvements across the year as a whole. February's trading statement flagged year-on-year -year increases in sales and profits at all of those four units again for the second for the first half period, but then warmed of a 40% drop in sales at Primark to around £2.2 .2 billion, and the likelihood of an operating result near break-even from the retail operation, which doesn't really have an online presence. Finally, attention will switch to the dividend. AB Foods cancelled both its interim and its full-year payments last year, ending a long run of increases. Now, management may decide to err on the side of caution at the first half stage as Primark stores reopen, but analysts have pencilled in a full-year payment of 36 pence a share, which, if paid, would equate to a total distribution of £285 million. I hope that you and your families are all in good health and good spirits. Thank you for listening, and I look forward to talking to you again next week. <laughs>